Hey everybody and welcome back to another Sony camera app tutorial. Today we're looking at the Bracket Pro app. I'll try my best to give you a rundown of how the camera app operates, but I'll tell you straight up that I will never use this app again. This app is not for me. Maybe it isn't for you either. Maybe I'll teach some of you how to use it if you have it, but for others I might save you $5. So on the Play Memory Store it tells you this app snaps three shots at different shutter speeds, aperture, and focus settings, or two shots in the flash mode, so that's just on or off. They kind of describe it as a way for you to take multiple shots at different settings to learn which settings are best, but if you want to learn how to shoot in manual, just shoot in manual. Here's my first issue with the app. You can't use a manual adapter with the focus bracketing mode. I have the MC11 adapter and several Canon lenses. With my 35 1.4 Sigma art lens, the app lets you take a picture at least with the Canon lenses. It gives you a warning. So if you're buying this app to use the focus mode and you're using adapted lenses, you might be out of luck. My second problem with the app is the process of switching bracketing modes. You must first switch through the menu by going to app top and then switch modes on your camera's dial. It makes no sense why they wouldn't allow you to switch modes by using the dial alone. Very annoying, Sony. Maybe you can fix this in an update. Okay, well, it's not all bad. What can this app do for you? You could use the three images that it takes to create an image with a greater plane of focus or a greater dynamic range. So let's say you did want to use the Bracket Pro app for a high dynamic range photo that you create yourself in Photoshop or whatever your photo editing software is because the app doesn't blend them together for you. I guess that's what the HDR app is for, but I've never used it. Many Sony cameras have a built-in exposure bracketing system in the drive settings. It's the left button where you choose between single and continuous shooting. You can choose your amount of exposures. You can also choose the amount of exposure difference between them. So you don't even need this app to do that kind of thing. The only feature this app has that I don't already have is the flash bracketing, but honestly, I don't think I'm ever going to use this. So if you're like me and you feel the same way, don't buy this app. Save your $5. You can even give part of it to me by buying my time-lapse PDF guide through the link below. For those of you who have, thank you.